Um, but yeah, in terms of the observer, the observation, the one thing that really kind of has stuck in my head on the drive home was the challenge that the number eight did that um, resulted in a yellow card for him, where he said, fucking hell, man, fucking hell. Uh, the, in the observer's opinion, that should have been a red card for offensive, insulting and abusive language. Um, and I didn't take it offensively, you know, I, I took it as frustration. Um, he thought he won the ball, but obviously I see, I've see i seen him go through the player. And that's kind of um, left me with a bit of sour kind of taste in my mouth because I don't think anyone wanted a red card in that incident. Uh, I didn't feel offended. Um, and, you know, this is where like subjectivity of some decisions are really interesting, right? Because if the observer thinks that's a red card and I, I don't actually think it's uh, a red card at all, then how does that change my mark or, or you know, the feedback I'm going to get in my, my observation? So that's going to be interesting to see what comes in the observation. Hi, guys. Uh, off to my uh, game for today. It's a Saturday, three o'clock kickoff, back to the traditional um, kind of uh, match day. Um, and it is my first observation of the season, my second middle of the season, first observation, and super excited. I, I love getting observed, I love getting the feedback, I like getting the mark. Um, it really motivates me, so um, really excited to go out there and show what I can do. I've just checked my kit bag one more time um the the journey today is about an hour drive to the game i've got club assistance today so i'll give them a little bit of a briefing before the game and i'll i'll talk you through what i do there and um yeah excited and hopefully we'll be able to um at the end of this video go through the observation report that i get so uh, i'll be able to show you what i did well what i did uh not so well in the eye of or the eye of the assessor or the observer um but yeah See you in a bit. Hi there, so just got back uh, home from my game and uh, yeah, a little bit frustrated today, a little bit of a, uh, an interesting day at the office, so um, yeah, I'll talk you through it. So um, got there, the assessor was there straight away, um, really nice guy, um, but what I found out was the managers obviously saw him and knew him, so instantly they knew that, oh, the referee's getting assessed today. Um, and that becomes a factor during the game, right? Because all of a sudden they've got a little bit, a, another piece of information that they can use throughout the game to kind of try and get in your head, you know? Um, so that, I always find that a bit annoying, but, uh, but um, yeah, so the pattern of play today was really quite, there was a bit, quite a lack of quality in the teams really, in the sense that there wasn't a pattern of play. It was literally 
one keeper kicking it through all the way to the other keeper so a lot of end-to-end -end sprints and not really any amazing chances in the game the first half ended um, nil nil and there was a couple of times there was probably two challenges in the first half that i could have pulled out a yellow card um one was uh one of the attackers going through on the left hand side and the, the skipper was a little bit late on a challenge but it played a, a decent advantage went through and they had a shot on goal that went wide um pulled the skipper over and just said look that's the only one you're gonna have today um and that kind of management worked really well the skippers actually both skippers worked really well with me today so that was really uh, one positive um and then there was another challenge which um looking back yeah, it was just, uh, uh, they were both high, careless and like early reckless challenges. So it's possible that I could have given yellow. I decided to manage them both. Um, and then went in half time feeling actually there wasn't really much to do in the, in the first half. There was a couple of those two challenges and then a few little niggly careless fouls, but not much at all. Um, all I felt was, yeah, the pattern of play was just not helping. It was just really hot. And um you know, everyone was getting tired, including myself, and new boots equals blisters. So straight away in the first half, I was just like, I could feel it, and um, that was uh, not helping. Second half was a, a bit of a different game. Um, I think uh, the home team basically changed formation, and um, and that caused, you know, a little bit more, they, they got into the game a bit more, they had a few more chances, and actually ended up scoring in the 55th minute. Um, but before that, just before that, I'd given a, the uh, away team had a, a free kick, uh, had a, a foul, and there was an opportunity to play an advantage. But um, interestingly, at half time, the manager of the away team had basically told me, hey, I don't really want advantages. You've been giving way too many advantages. We just want the free kick. And that kind of played in my head. So I gave a free kick and the ball, the advantage would have been much better to give. It you know, went into the box and there was a potential shot on goal. So, um, you know, dangerous to kind of allow managers to get in your head. Um, he's probably regretting saying that to me because obviously he could have had a potential chance there. And um, But that caused some aggro from him. I went over and spoke to him and said, in no uncertain terms, thank you for your, for your feedback, but it is not welcome anymore. Um, concentrate on your own coaching and don't coach me. And as I was walking away, he just continued and continued. So my first ever yellow card to a manager was uh, was shown um, and then the home team scored a goal um, there was a couple more yellow cards in the game there was uh, one of the centre midfielders went straight through um, one of the home team's uh, players uh, he won the ball and he did but he won the ball after taking out the players ankles from behind so it was a pretty easy um, yellow card he proceeded, and this was only kind of noted after the game when I spoke to the Observer, to say, fucking hell, man, fucking hell. Um, so that's, I'll, I'll come back to that. To me, that was just frustration. Um, but yeah, the yellow card was enough for the challenge. A few minutes later, another uh, one of the away team players proceeded to tell me how, um, how shit he perceived my performance to be. And so that quickly followed a yellow card for a descent and a 10 minute sin bin. Um, and then a little bit as the game went on into the kind of dying 10, 15 minutes, the away team who were losing started to get a few more, a lot more possession and trying to trying to make some chances in the box. There was a lot of kind of tussles in the box, but then what also ensued was a lot of counter-attacking football the other way. So that really kind of, um, yeah, enabled me to, well, what I needed to do was a lot a lot of sprints and, and trying to be clever with my positioning in terms of knowing if this ball gets um, into the goalkeeper's hands, get on my bike because they were just launching it as soon as he got it. So that was there. And then there was a final yellow card for a descent from the away team in the last minute where there was potentially an opportunity to give the, the player a foul. Uh, it would have been soft, but then there was a free, uh, it went for a throw in. So I thought, let's just give the throw in. And um, he, he, he then 
you know gave me some information uh, and some feedback on my on my performance my decision making there so uh, an, another yellow card quickly ensued so um, overall in truth my performance was pretty average mediocre there wasn't really much to referee there was a lot of soft kind of fouls in the game I think I did well on some advantages but really the game was just a kind of so back and forth that um, there wasn't many chances it was just kind of a nothing game a pretty pretty uh, poor game of football to be honest and and it didn't mean or it didn't need me to have a worldy performance and and in truth it was a pretty average performance by me there was a, that advantage that I could have played and you know what I found at least in the few games that I've refereed so far this season is the players just want any form of contact they want a foul and it's just ridiculous you know they 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 were expecting fouls for just normal contact and they're getting highly frustrated when they don't win them uh, and I don't know if this is kind of due to the fact that you know we've spent 18 months you know locked inside um, but the you know the behavior and the frustration and the anger of players seems to be a little bit higher than, than it has been in previous seasons so I'm keen to hear if that's the same in your games maybe it's just me maybe it's my performance that's causing that but uh, definitely feel like the the tension and the anger and the the, 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 the feedback is a little bit higher than, than it normally is um, but getting on to the observation and I'll, when I get the observation, I'm going to add it to this video. So after this, you'll see me talk through the observation. But there wasn't, I can't really remember much from what the observer said. And there's one thing that sticks in my mind that's really frustrating. But, uh, um, you know, there wasn't much in the way of this was a good thing, this was a bad thing. Um, he did say I, I kind of lost a little, um, you know, sharpness in the last 10 minutes, which is true. I just almost because of the blisters gave up you know in terms not gave up but definitely tried to be smarter in my positioning especially as it was kind of back and forth um looking at ref six i gave, I, I did cover 9.24 kilometers which is realistically a really high uh, distance for me to cover in a game and it just shows how end-to-end -end it was um lots of sprints in the game tons and tons of sprints which i'm happy about i didn't feel like I've said all along, the, the, my fitness in pre-season and working hard on that is really helping me in my game. So really happy with that. But it was a tough game. Um, heart rate zone I'm just looking at now was quite high. Um, again, I think that's very kind of conducive to the fact that the weather was so hot and it was so back and forth. There was barely, there was lots of spells within the game where the ball just didn't go out of play for ages. So um, that was just consistent, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but yeah, in terms of the observer, the observation, the one thing that really kind of has stuck in my head on the drive home was the challenge that the number eight did that um, resulted in a yellow card for him, where he said, fucking hell, man, fucking hell. Uh, the, in the observer's opinion, that should have been a red card for offensive, insulting and abusive language. Um, and I didn't take it offensively, you know, I, I took it as frustration. Um, he thought he won the ball, but obviously I see, I've seen him go through the player. And that's kind of um, left me with a bit of sour kind of taste in my mouth because I don't think anyone wanted a red card in that incident. Uh, I didn't feel offended. Um, and, you know, this is where like subjectivity of some decisions are really interesting, right? Because if the observer thinks that's a red card and I, th I don't actually think it's uh, a red card at all, then how does that change my mark or, or you know, the feedback I'm going to get in my, my observation? So that's going to be interesting to see what comes in the observation. Do you think if someone said that to you, is that something that you would be sending a player off for? I just think if I was going to send that player off for that, I'm going to have five, six, seven yellow uh, red cards in a game. So that's kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. But yeah, the other, the only other thing that happened was after the game, the uh, away team manager was very, very um, disappointed in my performance, which he's fine to do. I would have probably spent more time focusing on his team's performance rather than mine. Um, but this is the type of games that we're going to have as referees you know from the uh, home team they said i was the best uh, best referee they've seen all season which is the one you'd get they've won a game they're at home um there's only four games so far in the season but 
you know, you get that where one team says you're the best referee all season and the other team says the worst referee they've ever seen. So that's just going to happen. And, um, you know, it's it's probably not the last time I'm going to hear that this season. But, yeah, I can imagine if you're not thick skinned, you know, that can be demoralizing. And, you know, sometimes it can be. I, I'm a bit annoyed by it. But, um, but I also know that sometimes coaches and players look through rose tinted glasses at what they think is great and then and what they don't so all i know is many of their players came up to me at the end and actually were 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 pretty complimentary um some of them didn't come over to me which is fine uh, i always think just come over and say just handshake or fist pump or whatever and just say you know thanks for turning up because it's you know there are a lot of referees that are not uh, not re-registered, right? So just, just say thank you, you know? Or don't even say thank you. Just, you know, come and acknowledge that they played a part in the game today, whether they thought it was wrong or not. But anyway, I will be uh, waiting to get my observation. We'll see how that kind of um, interpretation of, of the offensive language impacts um, the feedback and impacts the mark. Um, hopefully it doesn't impact it too much because otherwise I'm uh, going to be bitterly disappointed. But um, overall, yeah, a pretty average game, average day out. Uh, feel good about my fitness, as I've been saying, which I'm happy with. I've got blisters, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to strap myself up for Tuesday. I've got a game on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Have a nice dinner and a... Maybe a cele mm, celebratory beer is probably the wrong word, but a nice beer to ease my uh, ease my nerves from the game and try and forget about it going into uh, the next few days where I've got a couple more games uh, this week. So, see you on Wednesday when I get the observation. Hey guys, so it's Wednesday um, and I've just had my uh, assessment through in email, so I haven't actually read it yet, so I'm going to read it with you and we're gonna go through each section and then hopefully fingers crossed there's a decent mark at the end there's the mark that I need or the average I need for my five assessments this year is 70 so as long as I get there or thereabouts it's a good start um, but here you go so the game was lip hook against Pools Grove it was 1-0 and it was on the 14th of August so the first three sections well the first section is the application of law and it's split up into three different uh, areas so recognizing and penalizing fouls correctly and consistently um, issuing correct sanctions and applying a stepped approach and applying advantage effectively and manage follow-up appropriately so as you can see the first one is um, given a score of two um, so you get a score from one to five five being excellent one being poor uh, three is basically what you you're averaging and I think there's 20 different categories and to get 70 you basically need 10 threes and 10 fours so um, started off here with a two which is obviously a below average score so let's see what he said so uh, picked up all 15 major offenses from the 10th minute so the first foul was in the 10th minute uh, to the 93rd minute uh, there were 10 in the first half uh, six by the oh sorry no ten by the home team six by the away team uh, restarted match in accordance with law great um, he's put in the timings of the offences for the home team and away team um, you issued cautions in the 51st minute to the away team uh, officials so that was the manager that I booked for dissent um, 61st minute uh, the away eight um, it says he's I've given him a a card for foul and abusive language. I felt that the away eight should have been given a red card. You gave a free kick against the a a away eight in the centre circle. That away eight turned and faced you from six metres away and shouted, uh, "This is a swear word, fucking hell, man!" I got the ball and the away eight turned away, took a few pace, then turned back to face you and repeatedly used those words. So, if you've been watching earlier, um, this was the major thing that I was disappointed with from the observation that the fact that. The official, uh, the observer has said, I've missed a red card for what he's de deemed to be foul and abusive language towards me. Um, I felt it was said in frustration. Um, in the game, I'd actually managed dissent and I had three 
uh, yellow cards for Descent, two Cinders and one for a manager. So I'm pretty comfortable and, and consistent with how I manage Descent. But to me, this was out of frustration. I did not think it was a red card. Um, but that's the observations, uh, the observer's uh, opinion. Uh, I spoke to you about this offence in my post-match brief and you said you issued a caution for frustration. It's not technically correct. It was a caution for a reckless uh, foul. Uh, in the 62nd minute, you sent away 11 to Sinbin. 91st minute, you sent away 2 to the Sinbin. So, um, yeah, so I got a mark of 2. And that's obviously been marked down just for the fact that the observer thought I've missed a red card here. So, not a great start. Uh, already kind of a little bit below where I need to be in terms of these things. So next section, issued correct sanctions and five stepped approach. Um, general run of the mill match, end to end play. It was a really dull game, to be honest. There was, and actually most of my games in the middle this season so far have been very dull in the sense that it's just a lot of possession based football, end to end and no real clear cut chances and this didn't really help me in this game. There wasn't really major key incidents, no penalty decisions, no red card decisions or anything like that, at least in my opinion. Um, match started at steady pace, first offense in 10 minutes. Um, after home team scored in the 55th minute, uh, away team seemed to be more vocal during the match. You did call and speak to the players, but it needed to be louder for all to hear. I'm not sure it needs to be that loud if, if it's being seen that I'm managing it. But anyway, in the 10th, home six tripped away 11, 23rd, uh, lots of different basically fouls that he's been put in here. All these offences, you did not speak to the players who were guilty of an offence. By speaking to players early in the match, show you are using the stepped approach for further action to be taken um, and setting out your plan of referring to keep control. So this is where a stepped approach is just what you define or how you define it in the game right so if there's a careless foul in my opinion you don't need to speak to the player after that if that player is um consistently uh, giving doing careless fouls then you might want to say okay cool you're, you're getting close here to persistent infringement if there's a close to reckless challenge maybe you want to bring in the captain there to say look that's you know very borderline here um so that's how i would have used the stepped approach but again Obviously, it wasn't deemed to be appropriate in this game, but who knows? I got a three, which is an average score. So we move on to the next one, which is advantage. Although this match was end-to-end, -end, you were always looking to play an advantage. You did this in the 46th minute when the away eight tried to trip their home team without losing any control. So I think there was a couple of incidents around advantage in this game. Obviously, I think I actually played a couple of bad advantages um, where... There was definitely an attack. I actually, I actually tried to, put, I tried to play an advantage and then brought it back, and I could have given myself an extra couple of seconds. There was one really early on that I played, which I thought was great, which hasn't picked up. But um, score of four here. So actually, in the end, I've basically got an average score of three for that section. So, so far, so good. Match control. Um, I'm starting to see some slightly bigger scores here, so that's nice. So the the key. Um, the key categories here are um, had control of the match of every stage, reacted appropriately to change of temperature, consistent objective not influenced by others, um, and was firm, decisive, self-confident and self-assured. So already just had a quick spot and I've got some good marks here. But okay, so had control of the match at every stage. Isolated players when you wish to speak to them or issuing them cautions. Um, a load of different things here where I've spoken to players. Um, you made the player stand with you whilst issuing cautions. So it's important to isolate uh, players when you're giving a caution. One, you need to get their name. Two, you need to really give them a reason why you're giving them the caution. Three, it's good to just bring them down, calm them down because what you don't want them to do is you give the caution and there's still the temperature and they're up here and they're gonna go and commit a, a stupid foul straight away. So bringing them down, getting your point across and actually you're doing them a favor because you're trying to get them to calm down and stop them having to leave the field by causing another offense. Um, so I got a good mark here for four. Uh, temperature of the match, you did not stick to a rigid patrol path. You're moving all around the field of play which enabled you to pick up the 15 major offenses. Um, so, okay, uh, 
I didn't. It's really hard to stick to any form of patrol path in a game where you have club assistance, right? So that's fair enough. I was walking, I was trying to get around where I needed to be. I don't think the temperature of the match really changed much. It was a fairly a mediocre game and there wasn't really any massive flashpoints in my opinion. So that's good. Uh, consistent objective and not influenced by others. So, you were consistent with both teams and your decision making. I feel what would help you in your mana management is to call some decisions such as blue goal kick, red throw in, um, also call players, call to players during open play, um, such as keeping your hands down, no foul. This would let the players know you're nearby watching play. I feel to adopt something like this would help your performance as a referee. Cool, fair enough. Um, I don't know if like goal kicks and you know are needed to say anything like I just say goal kick um, and I do like to provide some comments during the game like keeping your hands down I'm watching you no foul etc but I've noticed that different times in a game I'll up my involvement and, and lower my comments depending on how the game's going so if I feel like it's starting to get away a little bit I'll stop upping my involvement and if not I'll start coming down um, was firm decisive self confident self assured uh, I think this is strength so entered the field of play looking confident good body language two captains for the task you have already given your club assistance instructions use a good strong blast on your whistle to show authority so um, that's an example of where I was self assured and confident throughout the game I thought I was um, pretty confident pretty in control so that's good so overall I got four four three and a four so um, uh, that seems to be a strength a, a strong uh, few marks on the observation um, fitness work rate and positioning so this was a hot day and I had new boots on I got blisters super early and that was definitely causing me some pain but let's see what he says so probably positioned to be able to make credible decisions so I felt you needed to follow play when the ball is taken into the corner post uh, area of the field of play when you have a club assistant so basically what he's saying is obviously the club assistants in my uh, instructions to them I've asked them not to call any fouls so in that case I need to be getting deeper into those corners when the players are around there just to spot any infringement so uh, I think he's completely fair in saying I don't think I penetrated that area as much as I needed to um, but again because of the temperature game I didn't think I needed to do it as much so um, but fair enough um, let's see what else he says such an 11 to the ball down by a club assistant you were just off the middle of the area 25th minute yeah a lot of points here a lot of incidents where he just said I haven't got deep enough into that corner um, highlighted that I used backward movement during open play um, so that's you know, I try and run backwards if possible. You, you want to try and keep your viewing where the ball and the play is. But obviously sometimes when the goalkeeper's there, you don't want to turn your back and run. You want to actually run backwards so you can keep everyone in, in view. So that's good. A score of three there. Was sufficiently close to play without interfering. So during open play, you're always nearby. Uh, eight corner kicks, you're always moving around, get a better viewpoint. Corner kicks seem to be a lovely thing for observers to pick up your positioning on. They want you to vary your, your places so that the players don't know where you are, so they know that, uh, so they can't get used to where you are, so they know if you're there always that I can get a foul in here. Um, so they love bringing up um, things around corners. So, uh, positive score of four, display good stamina, sprint speed throughout the match. So, um, Probably, if I remember, as the game went on, I tired a little bit. It was the heat, the blisters didn't help. Um, I think I had a few good sprints, but again, I don't think it needed that. But let's see what he says. So your movement from the start was good around the field of play, but you lacked a good sprint during the match. In the last 10 minutes of this match, your movement seemed to slow and not get uh, into important areas. Fair enough. I'll take that. Three. Stoppage, so next categories are stoppages and technical offences. So, managing penalty kicks, attacking free kicks effectively, including free kicks near the penalty area. So what this is all about is those ceremonial events where for a penalty kick, are you managing the ball on the spot, the goalkeeper on the line, and the players outside the box. For a free kick, um, or in and around the penalty area, are you managing where the ball's placed, are you managing the walkout of the 10 yards, making sure the keeper's ready, blowing your whistle when you need to, and making sure that the whistle, everyone knows it's on the whistle. So, in the 23rd 
um, and the 50th for free kicks near the penalty area, you'd pace out the 9.515 meter distance, make sure it was maintained until the kick was taken and you're getting into a new, new position. So, um, yeah, I'd, I demonstrated that I can manage a, a ceremonial free kick and I got a score of four. Um, other restarts, did he manage other restarts correctly? Goal kicks, corner kicks, throwings and kickoffs. So, wow, the observers actually noted down the number of throw-ins and the number of goal kicks, as well as the number of fouls in this game. So, um, you should definitely work up Opta um, tracking stats. So, here we go. There were 32 goal kicks in the match. I actually don't know how many goal kicks are normally in a game, so uh, I don't know if that's high or not. 32 goal kicks from the first minute to 89th minute. At goal kicks in the first, second and seventh, I took up a wide position. Uh, which was good, but for most of the match you stood in the centre circle. I would suggest occasionally position yourself in the centre circle if you're monitoring a situation between players, but mainly use the wide position for a wider viewing point. Now I agree with that to some extent, but I also think with the way that goal kicks have changed in the laws over the last few years, that positioning of goal kicks is really hard to, you, you need to really observe where the goalkeeper is going to take it, where the defenders are. Um, and what you'll find is obviously a lot of short goal kicks are happening a lot more now where the go uh, defenders are dropping deep or actually staying in the box. What's annoying is when they stay in the box and then they decide to run up and then you've got to adjust your position. Um, but yeah, so he's basically said, I got wide on a couple of occasions and then I was very central the rest of the game, um, which is fair. You made sure all 52 throw-ins were taken from the correct position on the touchline. Um, in the 80th and 87th minute, I told the away two where to take the throw in from on the touchline. Also, substitutions with the halfway line in accordance with law. So, it's another easy thing to get a you know to be picked up on is where you're allowing or how you're managing substitutions. They want it done at the halfway line, um, making sure that the player who's coming off leaves the field before the player coming on. And so, don't be lazy where you get the players to come over to you or you just allow them to do it themselves you need to you need to know who's coming off who's coming on make sure it's at the halfway line make sure you're doing a boot and jewelry check um, of the player coming on um, it was good to see that injuries in the 17th minute 45th minute 79th minute uh, were assessed and you made the decision no trainer was needed so in that game in this game there was no need for me to uh, allow a trainer come, to come on for a, an injury assessment. So I got two scores there of four, which is good. Next category is game understanding. Um, anticipated when what was going to happen next. So you're always aware of what was going to develop due to your movement and good calling to players in open play in the 53rd and 60th minute. Average score of three. Prevented incidents escalating by recognizing early potential threats. So I got a score of four here. During the match, you would talk to players and explain why you gave a decision. This was carried out mainly at a stoppage. The players did not always agree with you. The cautions and Sinbin situations were dealt with correctly in law and the yellow card shown clearly. Fair enough. Manage player intentions and game situations in an empathetic manner. So what does that mean? As the match progressed, the appealing and comments shouted from the away team, players and away team official and tech player increased, which was then an added problem for you. This led to you have to issue cautions in the 51st minute to try and maintain your match control. I feel you needed to be firm by speaking to players and clamping down hard from the first defense and getting players to work with you on your side. Again, this is where I'm gonna to have to disagree. First defense, I don't think you necessarily need to overtly get involved on the first defense. I think you need to spot the first couple. If that first one is just a careless challenge, just get on with the game. Um, I've got a score of three here on this whole section. I've got three, four, three. Uh, again, pretty average. Teamwork, okay. Gave effective pre-match instruction to assistant referees. I already know what he's gonna say here. Um, when it's club assistants, they like you to get your club assistants together and give the same instructions in one go. It saves you a bit of time, um, but it also means you're consistent with what you're saying. Um, and there's no perception issues of like favoritism by talking to one for a little bit longer than the other, etc. So you gave both club assistants your working instructions well before kickoff. Um, you're very good loud blast on your whistle to summon both captain for the toss. Both club assistants supported you well, even if their flag indication were not clear all the time. Always remember club assistants are part of your team to so work with them to help you. Okay, so he actually didn't bring it up. Um, he did mention it uh, in the debrief, but um, 
Club assistants is one of the hardest things to deal with because they are basically volunteers, probably they're subs in most cases, they're not trained in any way and it's just sometimes they can cause you a more grief than, than, than is needed. But those two on the day were, were good. I like to try and give them a thumbs up when I get close saying thank you, keep it up. And I always at half time say thank you. At the start of the game I say thank you for doing, for, for giving up your time to do it. Always make sure that I go over to them at the end, no matter how their performance is. Even if they've said or commented on my performance, I'll always make sure I go and say thank you, even if they don't appreciate it. So on to last category, communication. Oh no, no, I've got one more on teamwork. So acted correctly and communicated well when offences were indicated by the AR. So in this match, you picked up all your assistance flag indications, which is a good sign. Um, 52 throw-ins, eight corners, and 32 goal kicks. Okay, so um, good score of four. And then communication, which I can already see, I've got 444, so it's a good uh, strength of mine here. Signaled effectively with confidence, used the whistle effectively, displayed positive body language. So, all of these comments, hand indications, including indirect, were given firm and clear. Um, interestingly, um, good loud whistle to start the match throughout, good whistle tone. Body language very good from the start. I'd like to see and hear you calling players and decisions from time to time from the start of the match to aid your match control. I think he's contradicted himself a few times where he said good calling to players and then bad calling to players, but there you go. Because scores are 4 4 4, and then um, now is time to look at the score. We had that early, early setback of the two, and then as I've gone through, I've seen some good consistent threes and fours which is what I need so have I got more fours than I, than I needed to get out let's have a look boom total score is 71 I need a 70 I'm really happy compared to how you saw in the video earlier how probably disappointed I was with um, that comment that I missed a red normally if you missed a red in the observer's eyes that's gonna kill you um, but actually it's come back 71, um, I need a 70, so that's a good start to my season. Um, for a game which was pretty dull and not had had a huge amount of um, key match incidents or anything to really showcase my skills, um, I'll, I'll take that, I'll put it in my bag and we're on to the next game. So I hope you enjoyed going through my observation with me. Um, and we will be seeing you again soon. Make sure to subscribe and like. If you want to comment, let me know what you thought about the observation this day, this vlog, please do. And uh, we'll see you soon.